Hi friends, my name is Oluchi and I'm super excited because guess what? Today you begin your journey to becoming website builders. That's right. Now let's dive right in. What we'll be learning today? Lesson one, understanding websites. Now our lesson two would be why websites are important. Lesson three, different types of websites. Lesson four, how websites work. Lesson five, parts of a website. And then finally for the day, good website signs. Now what is a website? A website is a collection of web pages on the internet that you can visit using a web browser. I'm sure you all have seen a website before. Websites are like digital books or houses. If you have used YouTube ever in your life, or if you've ever watched a cartoon online, my friends, you've been using a website all along. Now, where do you see websites? You use websites every day. For instance, like you see on the screen, YouTube, Nickelodeon, Cartoon Network, just like I said before. So yay! Why are websites important? Hel websites help us do so many things. You can learn new things, talk with friends, buy or sell stuff online, play games as well. Wonderful! Now, what if we had no websites? Life would be completely different without websites. Imagine no YouTube, guys. No online classes. No games. That's awful. Websites connect the world. Websites let us share ideas with the world. Anyone can make your website and share their passion. Now, how big is the internet? We have over 1 billion websites, and you can add your own one day. Now, who makes websites? Web developers, like you can be. Developers use special code to create cool websites. Now, we'll be discussing the types of websites, and there are different kinds of websites. We have educational websites, where you see the school websites, learning platforms, online courses, just like the image we have over here, which says, learn from home now. This is an example of a website, and it's an educational website. Entertainment websites. Then we have the game sites, video platforms, music streaming. Now look at this website right here, the image. Next, we have websites for shopping, where you buy and sell things, just like your Amazon, Jumia, Conga, eBay, Shane, and all. Now look at this image right here, where you shop for online. We have social media websites, where you talk and share with friends. Example, I'm sure you've heard of Facebook, but that's for adults. Now, we also have Messenger for kids. There is a news website, which helps you know what's happening in the world. Example, the CNN, BBC, kids news page. For instance, you can see what a CNN page looks like. And you have your personal websites, blogs, portfolios, Personal pages where you talk about yourself or what's going on around you. you know, look at this image right here. This is a blog. So you can also do something like this someday. Then we have business websites. Company websites, online stores, service providers. Just like this image here, where you meet your new dentist. You don't need to go there, you book here. Everything happens online. Now, how does a website work? 
let's break it down. The user sends an information to the browser while the browser sends an information to the website. Relax, relax, I'll break it down further. Now websites start with code. Code is a special language computers understand. Just like we speak English, computers speak code. Now, your code, the code a developer writes, is stored in a server. And now the server means computer that stores the site. You use a browser to see it. The only way you can see your code is through your browser. And I'm sure you know what a browser is. You've seen Chrome. You've used Chrome. There's Safari. There is Firefox. There are a whole lot. Now, this help us see websites. You know when you want to look for a particular thing, when you want to search for, now when you search for YouTube, you go to a browser to search for it. That's just how you see your code. Those things you see over there were not just they are not just put there through magic. There are codes which the browser lets you see. And these browsers turn code into colors, buttons, and pictures. Like when you type www.google.com. That's a web address. Now the browser finds the server. The browser travels to the server. The server sends back the website. Then you see the page. This is how it goes. You send a code to your browser. The browser sends a message to the server. The server returns the information back to the browser and that's how your code, that's how your code becomes words, pictures, and buttons. So now, in abbreviation, what makes a website work? It says code plus server plus browser equal to website. Now, there are different parts of a website. Let's explore what's inside a website. You have the header. You have the navigation bar. You have your main content. Now, this is your header. This is your nav. This is your main content just like your stomach. Then you have a sidebar. This is a sidebar. And then finally your footer. But I'll be breaking it down. The header. The header is the top. It usually has the logo and title. For instance, look at this. This is an example of a header. These two images are headers. Um, it has a logo and then it has a title. Sometimes you also see buttons. We'll be discussing the navigation bar. Now, what is a nav? It is a menu that helps you move around the website. Just like the image here. You see your home that takes you to a specific information. You see your about. You see the... Um, services you see support you see contact how you can reach out to um the owner of the business or the owner of the website whatever it is very necessary when you are creating a website now these are different examples of a navbar this is one this is another and this is just different examples of a navbar now there is the main content which is the body now this is what it has it has a whole lot of information. Everything your website is talking about is in the body. It is a big area when you read or watch stuff. Like when you watch your videos on YouTube, that's the body. The videos you watch is actually the body of the website. And what's usually there? You see text, you see pictures, you see videos, you see games. All the stuff you came to see in that particular website is the main content. Then we have a sidebar. It mustn't be there, 
but then sometimes it's necessary. It is a small side section. Now look at how it's just right beside the main, the main page. It's a small section next to the main content. And what is usually there? Extra information like news, like ads, or some other helpful links. It's right here. Just extra information. Then you have the footer. Now what is a footer? The bottom part of a website. That's the last, the bottom of your website. And it always has contact information. It has um, copyright, which is right here. It also has social media icons. Like you can see the Facebook icon here, you can see the Twitter, you can see the LinkedIn and so on. Now, we'll be learning how, what makes a good website. How do you know that a website is good? When you go to a website, how do you know that, yes, this is it, this is actually nice. One, it is easy to read and use nice colors and the images it loads fast don't worry i'll be breaking it down further works on phones and computers no confusing stuff clear menu or navigation safe and the age appropriate for kids now the first one which is easy to read and use it means readability Readability means easy to read and use. The writing should be big and clear. It should be simple to understand and not confusing. Now look at our image. The fonts are not too tiny. Buttons are easy to click. Words make sense. Now compare these two images. We have the good and the bad one. When you look at the bad one, you know that it's tacky. The words are just everywhere. But when, now when you see the good one, it relaxes. It's actually pleasing to the eyes. So the next one is nice colors and images. That's where design comes in. The colors and pictures should make the page look fun and pretty, not messy. So it can be bright, but it shouldn't be too bright. Pictures are necessary because it helps explain things. And it should look neat. The next one is, how do you know, the next way you know a good website is if it loads fast. And that is performance. A great website should open quickly. Waiting forever is boring. There should be no spinning circles. You are there waiting for the website to load. Then it doesn't freeze. And it doesn't stop. It looks Knit. works on phones and computers now how do you know a website is good it is responsive that is if you decide to search for YouTube or Nickelodeon on your phone you see everything very well the size everything comes out really nice on your phone your phone is small but you can see the contents clearly and then when you search for the same thing with your laptop or your computer, it's still clear. So now that's, that's, that's what shows a good website. It should be responsive both ways when you're using your phone and when you are using a computer. So my next um, point is it shouldn't be confusing. Now, the title is User Experience, which is UX. As you grow up, as you go further, you'll get to know what that means. But just to break it down, it should be a clean layout. There shouldn't be pop-ups everywhere, just like the first image I showed you. The last image I showed you, there shouldn't be pop-ups everywhere. <coughs> there should be one thing at a time, just very appealing. There should be clear menu or navigation. It should have a simple menu that helps you find what you need. There should be home, about, contact, and it should be where you can easily see it. 
that the menus aren't hiding and the links work properly that's how you know a website is good and it should be safe and age appropriate it should be safe for kids like you it shouldn't be any bad language or scary stuff doesn't ask for personal information only kid-friendly content now you can be the builder you are one step closer next time we'll write our first code bye